Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the Lenovo ThinkPad Tablet 2. Now, let's not get confused here, because the first ThinkPad Tablet, well, that one was an Android tablet, and this one runs Windows 8 on an Intel Atom dual-core CPU. It's one of the lightest and smallest of the Windows 8 tablets. It weighs only 1.3 pounds. It's remarkably light, very easy to hold. Good looking too, with that kind of ThinkPad soft touch finish on the back that we know and love for ThinkPad people. We're going to look at it now. So this is the Lenovo ThinkPad Tablet 2. It's available now starting at $679. Now there's a couple of different SKUs for this and it can get a little confusing as to what you're picking. But here in the US it's a little bit more simple. Basically there are two ones to choose from. One with 3G slash 4G and one without. Both of them have the pen with the active digitizer and that's a Wacom pen. 679 gets you a 64 gig without 3G slash 4G, no SIM card slot with uh, actual electronics inside. And right now the, the one with 4G, and that's supposed to be 4G LTE on AT&T, I believe is unlocked SIM module, full size SIM card slot by the way, but 4G LTE that works only on AT&T, it also has HSPA Plus though. That one is listing for 949 on Lenovo's website, which is kind of expensive there. Anyway, most folks are probably going to be looking at this one here for 679 which is fairly reasonable for a full Windows 8 tablet. This one's Windows 8 32-bit. You can get it with either Windows 8 or Windows 8 Pro, depending on what you need. The Windows 8 Pro upgrade is 50 bucks. If you go with that 4G LTE model, it also has Windows 8 Pro by default. You can't change that, but two gigs of RAM, Intel Atom processor, the usual Clover Trail we've seen on all of these guys, Windows 8 tablets so far, 1.8 gigahertz dual core, two gigs of DDR2 RAM is as high as you can go. That's what, the Intel Atom can address. It can't do DDR3, it can't address more than 2 gigs of RAM. And again, 64 gigs of internal storage. Now, Atom tablets use an eMMC interface, sort of like an internal SD card interface, if you will. They don't support SATA, so you don't get that full SSD experience like you do on Intel Core i5 tablets. This is currently one of the thinnest and lightest Windows 8 full Windows 8 tablets on the market, the Acer Iconia Tab W510 being the next closest, 1.3 pounds, including the weight of the pen. Very thin, very good looking. Bottom over here has a HDMI port, and this is a docking port connector. Now that doesn't work with the optional keyboard. The optional keyboard for this guy is Bluetooth with a stand, and we'll show that to you, but there is a dock available that adds USB ports, HDMI port, and an Ethernet port, so kind of handy for your business types. You can see the little design cue over here. There's a little bit of a roundness over here, and that's to follow where this digital pen goes. On this side over here, we have the charging port, which uses a micro USB interface. This is not actually a USB port for data. This port right next to it, underneath the fiddly little rubber door, is your full size USB 2.0 port. Again, Intel Atom, you get USB 2.0, not 3.0. Now what's the drawback with this right here compared to other tablets on the market? It's very low power. I don't know why Lenovo did that, especially for something that's a ThinkPad business series tablet. It works with flash drives, mice, keyboards, but external self-powered hard drives, you know, those little pocket drives that you can carry around that don't really consume much power, this doesn't put out enough power to support that. That's kind of a bummer, a limitation certainly in terms of what you can plug in here. If you get yourself a powered USB hub, you can go ahead and use those things that require more power. Full-size hard drives, portable hard drives, optical drives, all that stuff. But I definitely list that as a con for this product because all of the other tablets we've looked at so far put up enough power that you can actually use an external hard drive. Our pen lives in this silo right here. Fits in very snugly. It's a small pen and it's Wacom technology for those of you who love Wacom. The good news is it's Wacom. The bad news is there are no WinTab drivers out that are compatible with this yet. Here we go again. Same thing happened with Surface Pro. We hope it'll be coming soon. The Asus Vivo Tab 810C also waiting for drivers for that guy. So, yeah. Now, that doesn't mean the pen doesn't work. It works fine for inking. That All that gets you is pressure sensitivity in apps that require WinTab, which means Adobe Photoshop, SIA Paint Tools, and Corel Painter. But for Art Rage, it works fine. For fresh paint, you get pressure sensitivity. Yeah. Under this door over here, we have our micro SD card slot and our full size SIM card slot. And there's our power button right there. And lastly, on this side, we have our headphone jack, 3.5 millimeter audio, combo audio, and volume buttons right here, and our rotation lock button for screen lock. And the back looks just like your usual Raven Black soft touch kind of ThinkPad 
tablet. Feels nice, picks up some fingerprint oils as you can see, also cleans up easily with a damp cloth. 8 megapixel camera back here with a LED flash. Lenovo logo, ThinkPad logo as you would expect. Good looking product, feels really nice in the hands. It's grippy, it's light at the same time, so it's just a pleasure to hold and use ergonomically. And where are the stereo speakers? There's a little slit right here. You always can't see it. It's just right on the bevel there. And then there's another one over here. Pretty loud, actually, for a little tablet, too. Tinny, but loud. Right here we have our Windows Home button, and this is a clicky, movable button. It's not a capacitive button. Given how small this is, that's probably not a bad thing. So that if your hand brushes over it, you want to accidentally activate it and send yourself home and you're in the middle of an application actually trying to do some work. 2 megapixel camera up here for video chat. Does a decent job. Now it's something that you really can't see very easily on the video, but the camera looks to be a little off-center. We can see the little rings around the camera module behind the glass. A little bit weird there in terms of quality control. This is an IPS display, 1366 by 768 resolution at 10.1 inches. We're not complaining. 1080p on a 10-inch display, well, that that's even would be even tighter than Surface, which is a 10.6-inch device. So, it's very readable, it's very usable, it's nice, it's sharp, it's clear, it has 170 degree viewing angles, IPS. It's quite bright too, we like it. The video camera can see the backlight alternating a little bit on and off, you're probably noticing that, but the naked eye cannot see that. That's the nature of LED backlighting, it actually cycles on and off very rapidly to control brightness, so sometimes cameras will pick that up even when your eye can't. In terms of performance, well this is an Intel Atom device, and that means it's absolutely fine here for the Metro UI, the live tile interface, and all these applications that run inside of it that are relatively lightweight and optimized to run on not super duper powerful CPUs. If you get into the desktop here, since this is indeed full Windows 8, it's reasonably good, but one thing I'll tell you is that you're certainly not going to be gaming on this. The Atom is really not for much more than casual games and the 3D games that you see available on the Windows Store in the live tile interface, and it has power VR graphics that Intel has licensed. Not the most powerful. Adequate enough to play 1080p video, certainly in 720p video in Windows Media Center or using the video application, the Xbox Live video app right here that we've got. But yeah, you can install and use Photoshop. It's, it's actually fairly usable, surprisingly. It just takes a long time to launch. Part of that's that EMC, EMMC interface that's used for storage and just in general the, the Atom loads programs a lot slower. So this little 10.1 inch guide, this is not really designed to replace your, your laptop, your ultrabook, or your desktop. This is a secondary mobile computing device and for that the Atom is perfectly adequate unless you have really strong needs. If you need to edit HD video if you're doing development work then this wouldn't be the, the choice for you. But if you're working with MS Office, you just want to play some videos, do your email, do your social networking, browse the web, play Adobe Flash content, streaming video, it's perfectly fine for that kind of stuff. And that's true of all the Intel Atom tablets. This guy actually benchmarks fairly quickly. It and the HP Envy X2 are two of the quickest. Now, relative to Intel Core and full AMD CPUs, we're still talking slow here. But on PC Mark 7, it managed a 1400 versus 1428 for the Envy X2, and that's 200 points higher than the other Intel Atom products that we looked at running Windows 8, like the Acer Iconia W510 and the Samsung AT 500T. Some of that may have to do with the fact that this, like the Envy, are later to the market, they had more time to develop drivers and to tweak the hardware and to get things running nice and quick. Now if we take a look at the Windows Experience Index, which is a scale of 1.0 to 9.9, as Intel out of Windows 8 tablets go, that's actually not too bad. We have 3.5 for the CPU, 4.7 for memory, 3.7 for desktop graphics performance, 3.3 for 3D graphics, and 5.5 for the hard disk or internal storage in this case. So not too bad. Again, by Atom standards, if you were looking at something that was an Intel Core i, the numbers would be about mm, twice as high for things like processor and storage speed. But not too bad. The Lenovo tablet has dual band Wi-Fi 802.11bgn. That's made by Broadcom. Uh, typically, we see that in Atom tablets is usually Broadcom. So that means no Intel wide eye wireless display. Though you can use HDMI out if you need it. It has Bluetooth 4.0. Ours does not have NFC, but it does have a GPS. Battery life on Intel Atom tablets is good. We were a little bit worried because this guy is smaller, less room for a battery. It does have a two cell battery inside, but so far. We've been getting about eight, eight and a half hours of use and mixed productivity. That means MS Office, email, web browsing, 
30 minutes of streaming video playback, some music playback, that sort of thing. If you're just going to use this to stream video the whole time, it's going to be shorter, certainly. If you're going to use it to play games to the best of its ability, uh, it will be shorter as well. But not bad, actually, for such a small, light tablet. Atom tablets don't have fans. They're like mobile OS tablets, like the iPad and Android in that respect, so you don't ever have to worry about listening to the fan work. Usually they run pretty cool. Our Envy X2 and our Iconia W510 really never got very warm unless we were stressing it with, with a game which was almost beyond its uh, ability to handle. This guy does get a little warm. That's the price you pay for something that's pretty thin and there's just not much room inside to dissipate heat. So it does get warm on the back. Not hot, not uncomfortable, certainly not nearly anything above body temperature, which is when it starts to feel uncomfortable. But a little bit like a toasty marshmallow. When it comes to accessories, Lenovo knows how to do accessories. We'll show you a couple of those in person, but you can see some of the ones that they have here are not too badly priced. VGA monitor adapter, 40 bucks. Uh, it's kind of pricey. You can find one less that, that's just some generic brand one, but that's about on par with everybody else's price who makes tablets. The dock right here, 100 bucks. That gives you the USB ports, the HDMI port, Ethernet. They have a stand case, and we're going to show you the sleeve case, which is really cool, it's very nice looking and it holds both the tablet and the keyboard. That one's only 40 bucks, nice deal. And the Bluetooth keyboard with stand is 120 bucks. And let's take a look at some of those in person now. So here's the keyboard dock, $120. This guy is Bluetooth. It does not use the physical dock connector. Pairs very easily on off switch right here. Very easy to connect and pair. And you can see it looks really ThinkPad-y, doesn't it? It looks like a nice keyboard. It is a nice keyboard. It's still, this is a 10.1 inch device. That means you're, you're gonna, you know, not have a whole lot of room to work with here. But Lenovo certainly did maximize the space and bring the keys out as far as possible. And there's obviously no trackpad here to keep it small, but we do have an optical eraser stick pointer, which is actually pretty usable. It's much better than one on the Sony Bio Duo, which is a real headbanger. Now, one thing that I'm not so fond of about this is it's just a stand, a lot like iPad keyboard stands. You lift this up and then you can see there's a groove here. You just rest the tablet in. You drop it in there. And let me tell you, it's real easy to knock it out. This is not a stable laptop replacement kind of experience. Here it is. It wobbles around. If you bang it by accident, you will knock it out. If you, you pick it up and carry it, you're taking your tablet's life in its hands because really it doesn't clip on there in any kind of secure way. It's just perfectly fine here to set it on the table to type in a nice, well-behaved way. If you tap on the screen, it doesn't wobble too much so you can actually use the screen with the touchscreen without having it flop around. But yeah, that, that's the, the one drawback. But I think this device, being how small and light it is, is primarily designed for those of you who just really mostly want the tablet and as light and portable a tablet as possible. Here's what it looks like from the side. And that's what it looks like from the back. And as typing experience ago, like I said, for 10.1 inches, it really doesn't get better than this. The only drawback is it is 10.1 inches, so things are a little small. Next, we have the $40 case, which has two compartments inside. So you can stick the keyboard in here and the tablet as well, close it up. Really nice looking, nice feeling. Closes with a satisfying thunk. If you're going to be buying the keyboard, I would say this is totally worth it, because it's a great way to carry both of them together. And lastly, this is what it comes with for a charger. A small wall wart with a short USB style charger cord right here, two amp, like your iPad charger basically. So nice that it's small, uh, not so great that you don't get a whole lot of cord for those of you who are used to long laptop cords and like that. For those of you who hate long cords, well you'll be thrilled. Uh, the bad thing about two amp is that means that this guy charges kind of slowly. It's not like one of those ThinkPad laptops with a rapid charge that can charge up 70% in something crazy like 45 minutes. This guy takes a good several hours to charge up completely. And this has a two cell lithium ion battery that's sealed inside. And now to give you an idea of size comparison, obviously we have the ThinkPad Tablet 2 in its Bluetooth keyboard dock right here. And this is the HP Envy X2, also Intel Atom Basic, same specs inside, but 11.6 inches. Metal casing. This guy is both a tablet and a laptop. Right now we have it docked to the included keyboard dock, and so you can see the difference in size right there. And this has a much more laptop-like trackpad and keyboard experience. So this guy is geared to those who really are looking for something that works as a laptop. You do a lot of typing, for example, and you want that. And there's a secondary battery also on this keyboard dock, a strong selling point. 
and it disconnects, so you can just use the 1.5 pound tablet. Granted, it's heavier at 1.5 versus 1.3 pounds, but it's also bigger at 11.6 inches as a tablet alone. Nice to have a lot of options. And now in terms of size and aspect ratio, we have the Retina iPad here. Obviously a different aspect ratio, so it is not as an elongated rectangle, but size-wise that ThinkPad is actually looking kind of small next to the 9.7 inch iPad, isn't it? Something. And lastly we have it next to the 10.6 inch Microsoft Surface Pro, which is the same footprint as the RT. So whichever one you're considering, you can see the size difference. The surface is of course a little bit bigger, 10.6 versus 10.1 inches. And it's going to be thicker because it's, this one's a full core i5, so you need space for the cooling. And now we're going to test out media playback with the 1080p trailer, and we'll hear the speakers at the same time. Using the built-in video player, you could also use Windows Media Player on this. 1080p MPEG-4 high-profile trailer here. So here we are now in the trailer, full 1080p. You can hear the speakers were at 70% volume. Not bad at all. It's certainly adequate. It can handle the playback easily. Now who is this product for? I would say given how portable and durable it is, this is really, for those of you who do a lot of note taking, who need to enter scientific notation, less so for graphic artists. Not just because WinTab drivers aren't out already, because those probably will come, but in general Intel Atom it just takes a bit longer, you know, to do anything. When it comes to graphic, graphically intensive applications, you start to notice some performance issues. I would really go with the Core i5 if I was going to use this for serious graphic art. For casual doodling, well, it's fine for that. So we're going to check out Fresh Paint first, which is free in the Windows Application Store. And pick red for Valentine's Day, drop our ink size down a little bit, and we're ready to go. And you can see we have pressure sensitivity. I can vary my line width here. I can do a very light line. I can barely come up with anything. Or I do a heavy line, like that. Works just fine. Tracking is pretty good. Uh, the pen is reasonably well calibrated. You can run Windows calibrations. It's generally hard to get it perfect on Wacom tablets. It's one thing Intrigue is actually better at, is getting the calibration just right to avoid the parallax. And here we have a regular Wacom pen. And you can see that works too. It requires a little more pressure than the one that comes with the tablet, but it works just fine. And I have a soft nib on this, which makes a difference too in tracking. Next we'll check out Art Rage Pro 3.5. These apps do not depend on a WinTab driver, so you get pressure sensitivity in all the features. And once again, we'll go with our heart, and we're going to use a pencil first, so you can see things like diagonal line tracking. It's fine. And we'll switch over to oil paints. And you can see how I can vary my line thickness and my stroke. So good pressure sensitivity there. Not available yet in Photoshop until WinTab drivers are ready, and we don't know when that'll be. And now for you note takers, here we are in OneNote 2013, and we'll test out the pen and the palm rejection here. Yes, it does have palm rejection. All modern tablets do. And it's quite fluid, actually. Nice and easy to use. Handwriting recognition works fine on this. If you get a full page of handwritten notes, do notice that Atom tablets will slow down just a little bit, but it's still usable overall. And of course, you can draw diagrams and all that stuff to your heart's content if you need to. Works good. So that's the Lenovo ThinkPad Tablet 2. It's available now. Lots of accessories, so much we showed you, like this Bluetooth keyboard right here. Certainly, if you're looking for the most compact tablet on the market, this guy's going to be hard to beat, as long as you don't mind those few caveats that we pointed out. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.